The Mini Hatch is a true original, especially in this three-door form. In this revised guise, the third generation F56 series version has become smarter and more sophisticated, and can be more individual too. Plus, some refettling work has been done on the punchy range of eager three- and four-cylinder engines. In short, this car claims to have come of age. As a brand, Mini has come to mean all kinds of things, but it's in this simplest three-door hatch form that the company's products are most iconically recognisable. This third-generation F56 design was first launched in 2014, but four years on was significantly updated to create the car we're going to look at here. Now, this Mark III model didn't really need any fundamental improvements, but it's a fashion-led product that has to match the style and technological trends of the moment. And sure enough, in this revised guise, all that has been brought bang up to date. As before, five-door hatch and convertible variants share showroom space with this three-door model, and they get the same range of improvements that we're going to cover here. There are plenty of them too. The piercingly bright headlights now use full LED technology, as do the trendy new Union Jack style tail lamps. Mechanically, the refettled engine range sees a detuned version of this Cooper's uh, 1.5 litre three cylinder unit, making it to the base Mini 1 variant. Plus, the four cylinder two litre power plant used further up the range has been significantly overhauled in pursuit of greater efficiency. Uh, the optional Steptronic Auto gearbox now has seven speeds. There's a whole fresh level level of connectivity via upgraded mini connected services and the brand's introduced a mini yours customized program that sets a fresh industry standard for the level to which buyers can personalize their cars plus this mini can be lighter you'll find it better equipped and it can now come with a wider range of options so, everything's changed, but thankfully at the same time, nothing that's really important is different. This little three-door hatch model is still the purest expression of mininess. It'll still charm you with its dinky looks and its go-kart handling. And it's still a go-to choice if you want a style-conscious urban runabout with much of the technology of a larger car. All those attributes remain, but they've been developed over more than half a century of mini history into, well, what? Let's find out. Hello. So, what's it like? Well, slip behind the wheel, and at first glance, you're reminded that for all its cheeky marketing, the little mini hatch is quite a lot more mature these days. Uh, the dashboard is smart, the materials are used are classy, and you aren't faced with quite so many obvious attention-seeking gimmicks. The massive central dinner plate display that once in a mini would have uh, housed an almost indecipherable speedometer is still there, but these days that is simply used for infotainment. The speedo has been relocated to a pod above the steering wheel here. Now that is the same wheel that in earlier generation models used to completely obscure the slot into which you had to press your ignition key to start the thing. Now that silly slot's long gone too. It's been replaced instead by a neat starter switch in the middle of this familiar row of toggle controls that have survived at the bottom of the center stack. So let's flip that and see what we've got. First impressions are good. Like all the most affordable power plants in this third generation new Mini, this one has three cylinders and triples always sound good at startup, even if in some other cars, a lot of them create quite a din when you get up to speed. Now this one doesn't. Uh, you'd really have to know your engines to realize that this wasn't a conventional four cylinder unit, but because it isn't, the burbling soundtrack is uh, so much more interesting, so much more mini, which is an important part of the cheeky, involving kind of driving experience upon which this car's appeal stands or falls. Now yes, people love the styling and the image, but one of these just has to put a smile on your face when you drive it. If the overall feeling that you're gonna get is of just another super Super Mini wearing a cute suit, then you'd have to question this car's place in the overall scheme of things. 
At the original launch of this third generation model in 2014, there were well-founded fears that this Charisma might well have been compromised. The news that the F56 series version would sit on the same longer, wider UKL platform used for a BMW MPV, the 2 Series Active Tourer, did after all suggest that this model might lose a bit of its unique mininess. But against the odds, it hasn't. Driving this car still delivers the same infectious naughtiness that loyal owners love so much much. There's still the same darty steering, the same quick fire throttle and at least if you're not very careful when it comes to sorting out the spec sheet, still the same unyieldingly bumpy ride over poor surfaces. Now we'll get to that in a minute but first you might be wanting to know about the mechanical updates that were made to this facelifted Mark III model. Now at first glance very little appears to have changed across the turbo only lineup but Mini is eager to assure us that in fact all the engines feature subtle modifications. Uh, this has meant efficiency orientated minor tweaks for the 1.5 litre three cylinder units which are used in the mainstream models but a rather more fundamental overhaul for the two litre four cylinder power plant that features the top Cooper S and John Cooper Works hot hatch variants, which gets uh, high pressure injectors, a redesigned exhaust system, and a fresh turbocharger. Arguably more significant, though, is the introduction of a new seven speed Steptronic double clutch automatic gearbox option that replaces the previous six speeder. Annoyingly, though, on the Cooper model that we're trying here, you can't specify that Steptronic transmission paired up with steering wheel shift paddles. They are reserved for the Cooper S and the John Cooper works model. Now we've chosen to try the Cooper because like most who have sampled models right across the range uh, we reckon it represents the sweet spot in the lineup. This uh, volume variant gets the same 136 HP 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol engine that assists the electric motor in BMW's i8 supercar and here is there it punches well above its weight giving the performance of this driver's derivative uh, at least a whiff of shopping rocket credibility. 62 mph can be dispatched in just 7.9 seconds en route to 130 miles an hour, which we think will be quite as fast as most will want to go in this car. Now, yes, you can travel much faster than that in a Mini, but we're not really sure why you'd want to. This variant is quick and eager to be revved, but not so powerful that it hurls you up to unnecessary or unmanageable speeds. Plus, as we mentioned earlier, the raspy sound is great. It perfectly suits the character of this car. The other options available to mini hatch buyers at the foot of the range offer more leisurely performance. Uh, that same 1.5 litre petrol engine now features in detuned 102 HP form in the entry level Mini 1, replacing the previous 1.2 litre unit, but their 62 MBH takes 10.1 seconds en route to 121 miles an hour. Customers are also offered a black pump fueled option, uh, and that's now the only one in the lineup in the form of the Cooper D model, and that borrows BMW's 116 HP 1.5 litre three cylinder diesel unit. Uh, this is able to accelerate the car to the 62 miles an hour benchmark in 9.2 seconds on the way to 127 miles an hour. So that's one end of the lineup covered. Uh, the other, as we mentioned earlier, is based around the two litre four cylinder powertrain, which features with 192 HP in the Cooper S, or in seriously quick, uprated 231 HP in the top JCW, John Cooper Works version. Uh, both are pretty rapid. The Cooper S is able to reach 62 in 6.8 seconds on uh, the route to 146 miles an hour, and the JCW improves that to 6.3 seconds and 153 miles an hour now. Both those two derivatives get speaker generated noise enhancement for more fiery feedback and the John Cooper version sounds particularly mean. Its performance is delivered to the accompaniment of a motorsport tuned popping crackling soundtrack. Only if you're one of those people who likes to rev up to the red line and really wring all the performance out of your hot hatch might you be disappointed. Uh, the four cylinder two litre power plant, uh, like the Cooper's lesser three cylinder unit, has pretty much delivered all of its punch by around 5,500 RPM. So instead, for really rapid progress, you have to learn to lean on the engine's slug of turbocharged torque. If you want to take up the paddle shift auto option with the top John Cooper flagship variant, you'll get an uprated eight speed sport transmission package. And that JCW model comes as standard with the super stiff sport suspension that you can have as an option on the other models. Although at no extra cost, you can alternatively specify the rather more compliant Cooper S setup. 
Now, we wouldn't hesitate to do that. In our view, the very last thing this Mini needs in any of its guises is a set of unyielding springs. Uh, this Mark III model's UKL platform allowed for a suspension redesign that actually gives the entry-level variants on standard 15-inch wheels a uh, really very reasonable ride. But if you specify the larger rims that the majority of buyers do choose, uh, this car's 17 inches, for example, uh, you can quickly end up with a car that on really poor, bumpy surfaces delivers all the suspensional compliance of a Halford's trolley jack. As I mentioned earlier though, you can do something about that when specifying the car by ticking the box with a variable damper control setup. Now this enables you to switch the ride to suit the mood you're in and the road you're on and it works through the uh, also optional mini driving mode setup. And that now works through a toggle switch on the centre stack rather than as previously uh, through a rather hidden selector at the base of the gear stick. And it enables you to choose settings uh, to tweak the throttle, the steering and on the auto automatic models, the gear change response between mid and green settings for efficient, comfort oriented motoring. Uh, you want the third mode though, sport when the road opens up and the red mist begins to fall. And that's something echoed appropriately by a red glow around this central display and less subtly by a little picture of a go-kart and the phrase maximum go-kart feel quite. A configure sport option on the center screen allows you to select or deselect a sport response from either the drivetrain or the chassis if you want to tailor things specifically. If all that's of interest, then make sure you have a mini hatch featuring the brand's performance control torque vectoring system. Uh, Three-cylinder variants won't have this unless you've paid extra for one of their John Cooper Works packs. Performance control electronically duplicates the kind of functionality that you'd normally get from a heavier, more complicated mechanical locking differential. Uh, it works through the turns to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. As a result, the car's kept planted through the tightest corner and you're fired on from bend to bend. What else? Well, in a car like this, the manual gearbox should be satisfying to use and snickety quick. Disappointingly though, this one isn't. It has a notchy feel and a longish throw. Still, at least the clutch is light, which uh, does help in town. And on a Cooper S or a JCW model, there's clever rev matching software that even instructs the engine to blip the throttle on down changes. So it sounds as if you mastered the perfect heel and toe technique and your friends will think you're the next Lewis Hamilton. Of course, you won't always want to be slinging this Mini about. In fact, typical buyers of the Mini 1 and the Mini Cooper D derivatives probably won't have any hooligan tendencies at all. Uh, those people will love this car's nippy, agile, urban maneuverability, and they'll also like the way that this third generation model is so surprisingly capable as a long distance journeying companion, uh, provided they have taken on board the suspension spec caveats that we mentioned earlier. Impressive refinement helps enormously here. The engines are quiet as well as smooth and noise from both wind and tyres is also well kept in check to the point where Mini is able to claim that this R56 series design is up to four decibels quieter than its predecessor. Now you could own this car, appreciate all those things and never need anything more from it. But what a pity that would be. The Mini Mark never waits an opportunity to remind us of its tradition for providing go-kart handling, and this car still delivers that. Thank goodness for that. It's hard to think of another car on sale today whose sales are influenced quite as directly by the way it looks as this one. Given that aesthetically the worst mistake any freshly designed Mini can make is to lose its mininess, the job of reinterpreting this car for a fresh generation of buyers is always a difficult one. Now, no one doubts that the original 50s Isigonis design got it right, sketched by Sir Alec on the back of a tablecloth in 1956. Almost as memorable, though, was the earliest turn-of-the-century Frank Stevenson-styled BMW R50 era version. Since then, though, things like the need for a higher bonnet line to meet updated pedestrian safety legislation inevitably detracted from the design purity of the R56 era Mark II model of 2006 and this third generation F56 version that was first launched in 2014. Even so, there's still quite enough brand DNA here to make this car as instantly recognisable as anything on the road. 
Just to make sure though, this Mark III model's package of midlife changes have been all about the embellishment of brand DNA. Uh, headlamp styling has always been one of the defining elements of mini design and a lot of work's gone in here to further develop that. Uh, the lights may look much the same as before, but the full LED technology behind them is very different. That's particularly if you order the optional matrix adaptive beams, which automatically extinguish parts of the lamp that might dazzle other road users. Either way, a new LED daytime running light ring surrounds the beam and illuminates as a turn signal when it's needed. Uh, otherwise, all the visual cues that you'd expect to see on this definitive mini model have been uh, perfectly preserved in the move to modernity. Uh, so the clamshell bonnet, the upright windscreen, uh, the blacked out pillars that create the uh, floating roof and the continuous band of chrome at the base of the glass house. That's all present and correct. Here we're looking at the three-door hatch version, but Mini's also spun five-door and club and estate body styles off this third-generation F56 platform for those who need a bit more space. Plus, as usual, there's a convertible variant too. This, though, is the body shape that really defines mininess. And at first glance, not much has changed about the dinky, power-packed profile, which, as before, comes with the no-cost option of a black, white, or body-coloured roof. Uh, close inspection, though, reveals a revised range of alloy wheel designs and they can vary in size from 15 to 18 inches. We've got the 17 inch rims here as part of an optional John Cooper Works pack and it also includes a bespoke body kit. You can also add a little trimming panel by this side indicator that can be customized using 3D printing or with a particular pattern or even your name. Uh, the mini yours customization program really does mean exactly that. It's at the rear, though, that this facelifted F56 model is most easily recognisable as the improved post-2017 era design. Uh, these new Union flag-style LED tail lamps are the reason why. Now, you might quite understandably feel that you don't need reminding where the Mini concept originally hails from, in which case you might be disappointed to hear that you have to have these. Uh, get over that, though, and put this little flourish down to just another touch of quirky character, and you'll bond with it just fine. It's here at the rear where it's easiest to identify whether the Mini you're looking at uh, uses three or four cylinder power. The smaller 1.5 litre engine features this single left side exhaust. The larger four cylinder unit comes with a more potent low diffuser and that incorporates a couple of central tailpipes. Time to take a seat behind the wheel where you're reminded that cabin quality in modern Mini models really is now the equal of any mainstream BMW you might care to name. Surrounded by all of this, it's really quite easy to forget how flimsy a lot of the fittings on the early BMW Minis were. Remember the first R50 design's indicator stalk that activated with all the subtlety of a snapping biro? Or the Mark II R56 model's feeble little plastic joystick that was used to enter sat-nav instructions? Everything feels a good deal more substantial in this third-generation car, a good deal more grown-up. The supportive seats are a good example of this, with a wide adjustment range and a decently lengthy base that makes them surprisingly comfortable on long journeys. Uh, there's a proper rotary controller for the lights, and there's a whole series of lovely touches. Now, some are things you can add in as options, like this engraved Mini Yours Piano Black Fascia panel, which illuminates with a Union Jack motif, but others feature a standard rod across the range, like the way that the center stack mounted start stop tab features a heartbeat illumination which pulses before the engine started. Or the optional LED illuminated ring around the centre dash monitor here that progressively lights up the perimeter of the screen as you switch driving modes, uh, engage the engine stop start, cope with parking or count down to your next sat nav turn off. Now, if you haven't tried a third generation F56 series mini model, uh, you may be surprised to find that this huge central display here uh, these days no longer functions as a speedo, less characterfully, but uh, more practically, that has been relocated to a pod in front of the steering wheel where it's flanked with a crescent moon rev counter and a fuel gauge. All of this has freed up this central area for much more infotainical trickery. Uh, the screen is now six and a half inches in size across the range of standard, but here it's been upgraded to 8.8 .8 inches. That's as part of the Navigation Plus pack that includes all the latest mini-connected media features. Um, though it's 
really crying out for touchscreen functionality. These color layouts are actually marshaled by this classy, effective iDrive style controller down here by the thankfully conventional handbrake. What else? Um, well, the ergonomics aren't bad with all round visibility aided by these slim window pillars. Uh, cabin storage, that's reasonable too, although the door pockets are a bit small and there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses. On the plus side there, you do get a reasonable glove box, uh, twin cup holders ahead of the gear stick here, and a small cubby just ahead of that, which is clearly intended for your phone because USB points and a 12 volt port sit just above it. Now that Navigation Plus pack gives you this central armrest with its incorporated uh, phone charging compartment, but you won't want to have that down too often because it gets in the way of both uh, the gear stick and the infotainment system control dial. Well, time to take a look in the back. Now, the main change that was made to this third generation F56 series mini hatch was its increase in size. Uh, it measures 44 millimeters wider, seven mils taller, and 98 millimeters longer than its R56 Mark II model predecessor. Now, unfortunately, most of that length gain was swallowed up by the lengthier front overhang that was needed to meet the tougher pedestrian impact standards we mentioned earlier. Still, a 28 millimeter longer wheelbase means that Mini has still been able to deliver us a passenger compartment uh, that is useful bigger than any previous version of this car and that's something that ought to be most evident in the rear. Pushing the seat back and forward in this three-door model isn't as easy as it ought to be and the seat slides out of your way when you activate this latch but it won't slide back again to its previous position afterwards so you have to fumble around beneath the seat before you can get back behind the wheel. Uh, let's duck below this low roof and see what things are like on the rear bench. Well, there's good and bad here. Legroom remains very cramped indeed if there's an adult of more than average height in front of you. Um, if that is going to be an issue, then the five-door version of this car, which gets an extra 72 millimetres of length between the front and rear wheels, will obviously suit you better. Uh, what is quite impressive, though, even in this three-door model, is the amount of head and elbow room you get. And it's a lot less claustrophobic back here than we expected it might be. These deep side windows help considerably with that issue. Uh, despite that, you still wouldn't want to be stuck here for a long journey. There's only room for two back here, so Mini has given this bench this neat raised centre section that holds you in place nicely through the corners. Uh, there's a central cup holder, plus separate cup holders on each of the doors, and seat back pockets too. Let's finish by taking a look in the boot. Now it's a good square shape. There's a low loading lip and providing you've gone from the pepper or chili packs that almost all owners specify, you'll get this adjustable height boot floor. Now that can be neatly clipped forwards against the rear seat back when it's not in use. Uh, there's nothing beneath the cargo area base. Mini has never bothered to offer the option of a spare wheel to sit down there. So in the event of a puncture, if you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road with a mini mobility kit, you'll need to specify one of the optional wheels that can be had with run flat tires. Uh, there are no bag hooks, but you do get a 12 volt socket and the usual tie down points. The extra size of this Mark III model enabled Mini to increase cargo capacity by 30% to 211 litres. Okay, so that's still not what you call huge, and it's still miles behind what you get in a more practically shaped, trendy rival like a Volkswagen Beetle or a Citroen DS3, let alone an ordinary Fiesta-sized Super Mini. But the changes made here have at least now elevated this space beyond the point and laugh category. It's certainly a lot bigger than you'll get in a rival Fiat 500 and it's not too far off the kind of room that's delivered by potential competitors like Alfa's Mito and uh, Nissan's Duke. In fact there's actually more room than you get in either of those two models if you push forward the rear bench. Plus it helps that the backrest splits 60-40 rather than 50-50 as in the old R56 series model which makes it easier to get awkwardly shaped items like push chairs in. Uh, with everything flat, a uh, surprisingly large 731 litre load capacity area reveals itself uh, but you don't buy this car for its practicality or if you do then you don't buy this three door hatch version anyway. Uh, the five door version of this model offers a 278 litre boot which is extendable to 941 litres.
There are two mini hatch body styles, this uh, three door version and a five door variant that's available with all the same mainstream engine options and which attracts a 700 pound model for model premium. Prices sit in the 16 to 25,000 pound bracket and the range is split into a couple of parts. At uh, the most affordable end lie the 1.5 litre three cylinder Mini 1 and Mini Cooper models, variants that prioritise petrol power, although Cooper buyers get the option of a little diesel engine of the same size too. At the other end of the lineup lie the performance orientated Cooper S and John Cooper Works hot hatch versions, both of which use a more potent two litre four cylinder petrol engine. The three door is our focus here and prices for it kick off at around £16,000 and that gets you the entry level Mini 1 version offered only with 1.5 litre 102 HP petrol power. A typical Mini hatch buyer though is probably going to want to find just under £1,500 more to get the perkier Cooper variant that we're trying here which uses an uprated 136 HP version of the same three cylinder engine and costs from around £17,500. If you're looking at a Mini Cooper and you're one of those people who particularly prioritise efficiency or you're likely to be undertaking longer trips then you might be interested in finding around £1,200 more to get the single diesel derivative which is now offered in the range the 116 HP 1.5 litre Cooper D. Switch your attention to the four cylinder section of the range and you'll find yourself limited to petrol power now that Mini no longer offers the 2 litre SD diesel engine for hatch models sold in our market. Uh, you'll need a budget of just under £21,000 for the 192 HP Cooper S, but you'll need to think in terms of a spend of nearly £25,000 if you want the same engine tuned out to 231 HP in the top JCW John Cooper Works version. And that's a model only offered in the three-door body style. Uh, Cooper, Cooper S and JCW models are also available in convertible form for a premium of around £2,500 over this fixed top body shape. Whatever your choice of body shape though, there's the option of automatic transmission across the range. Uh, either a seven speed Steptronic double clutch system on the mainstream variants, and that was freshly developed for this revised model range, and it costs from uh, 1,400 pounds, or an eight speed sport automatic available on the top John Cooper Works version. Annoyingly, you can't get steering wheel paddle shifters on an auto Cooper variant. They're limited to the Cooper S or JCW models. Onto the value proposition that this kind of pricing represents. Now, if you find the figures we've just quoted to be a little on the high side, then you might be one of those people who still sees this mini three-door hatch as a kind of dinky city-sized runabout it used to be, a Fiat 500 or Vauxhall Adam competitor. The reality, though, is that this Mark III design has grown a size away from that, and it's now more closely comparable to a slightly bigger Fiesta or Polo-shaped Super Mini in terms of overall dimensions. And that makes the pricing a lot easier to stomach. This isn't, though, one of those cars that you can only compare to similarly-sized competitors. A mini hatch buyer is much more likely to be interested in style than size, which means that such a person could well still be considering a Fiat 500 or an Adam. But by the same token, they could also be looking at one of the more stylized super mini based small SUVs uh, like a plusher Nissan Duke. At the city car end of the scale, well, we wouldn't waste much time considering the Vauxhall Adam. Equivalent versions of that cost around £1,500 more than their direct mini hatch counterparts. Now, the cute Fiat 500 has more going for it, but the closest version of that car to a Mini 1, uh, the Twin Air 105 HP model, doesn't cost much less. A sportier Bath 500, well, that significantly undercuts the Mini Cooper on price, but it costs much more to run. As for the Duke, well, that won't give you this Mini's go-kart-like handling, and the fastest version of that Nissan that you can buy is now a 1.2-litre DIGT variant, putting out no more than 115 HP and costing around £1,200 more than a base Mini 1. Now, none of those cars, in our view, get particularly close to replicating what's on offer from this mini three-door hatch. So, what does? Well, a couple of overtly fashion-orientated super mini rivals do spring to mind, although both are much older designs than this mini, uh, the Citroen Drive DS3 and the Alfa Romeo Mito. Go for an entry-level DS3 PureTech 82 or a Mito Twin Air, and you'll save around £500 over the cost of a comparable Mini 1. But in neither case will you get the performance to properly match up to the Mini. Uh, the same goes for the Pokia DS3 and Mito variants further up the range, all of which cost 
cost significantly more than their mini hatch equivalents. So, is there anything else a potential mini buyer could consider? Well, not much. The market's other compact fashion icon, the Volkswagen Beetle, is a slightly larger car and a pricier one. In base version, it costs over £2,500 more than an equivalent Mini 1. Uh, the magazines make comparisons with ordinary, boring, conventional super minis, but we think the whole reason that you're looking at a Mini hatch in the first place is because you don't want one of those. So there's really no point in our making endless comparisons to products in that segment. Anyway, if you're looking at this uh, three-door hatchbody style, there really aren't many conventional super mini options. Uh, most cars in that category these days only come in five-door form. Now, the only exceptions to that rule being uh, Vauxhall's Corsa, Ford's Fiesta and Volkswagen's Polo. Three-door versions of this trio are probably more comparable to this Mini in their uh, rather more sporty forms. If you're looking at a Mini Cooper, around £1,000 more would get you a comparable uh, Corsa GSI or a Fiesta 1 litre T 140 PS ST line, but you get less performance, you get feebler handling and higher running costs. If you're looking at a Cooper S, then you'll be paying the kind of money that would get you a comparable, uh, well-specified Fiesta ST or Polo GTI. A Peugeot 208 GTI, though, would be around £3,000 more. Uh, now, the other small junior hot hatches you might have on your radar, cars like the Seat Ibiza FR, uh, the Suzuki Swift Sport or the Renault Sport Clio only come with five doors. So that's talked you through all the potential alternatives. Bottom line, there's nothing quite like this Mini, but if this car grabs your interest, you've probably already decided that for yourself. In which case, if you're serious about buying one, you're gonna to want to know just how generous the brand is being this time around with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, if you watched other sections of this film or you've been to a dealer already, you might know that uh, for this revised third generation model range, Mini has standardized two features that were previously optional, full LED headlights and the larger six and a half inch center dash color infotainment screen. Union flag style LED rear lamps are now standardized too. Otherwise, the kit list is pretty much as it was, which means that on all the three cylinder variants, by which we mean the base Mini 1, the Mini Cooper and the Mini Cooper D, you get a spec package giving you air conditioning, power heated door mirrors, LED front fog lamps, white indicators, a chrome trimmed exhaust pipe and an alarm. Inside, you get Bluetooth connectivity, a keyless starting system, a trip computer, a three spoke leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel and a four speaker DAB stereo. Uh, the two Cooper variants get 15 inch alloy wheels and door mirror caps and body color too. Uh, to this tally, the four cylinder two litre Cooper S hot hatch adds larger 16 inch wheels, twin exhausts and performance control torque vectoring for extra traction through the turns. Inside the S variant features sports seats, a sports leather steering wheel and an LED ring around the center dash infotainment screen. The top John Cooper Works model of course goes further with 17 inch wheels, sports suspension, uh, bespoke body kit, anthracite headlining, upholstery which is trimmed in a dynamic and cloth combination and yet another special steering wheel. From there on in, it's down to the level of restraint you can bring to bear on the tempting options list. And your starting point here will be the pepper pack and or the chili pack options. If you're going to preserve the resale value of your car, we'd say that probably the least you're going to have to do is to stump up for the pepper pack. That costs £1,500 and it's aimed primarily at buyers of the three cylinder models. Uh, pepper people get things like dual zone air con, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, a storage compartment pack, floor mats, um, passenger seat height adjustment, cruise control, an interior lighting pack and a sport leather steering wheel, plus rear parking sensors have been added in with this revised model. As part of the deal, you also get the mini excitement pack that includes an LED ambient lighting ring around the center dash screen and projection of this model's revised mini logo onto the ground on the driver's side as you open the door. A Mini 1 with a pepper pack will come with the 15-inch alloy wheels and the body-coloured mirror caps of the Cooper version. And a Cooper model with a pepper pack will get a wheel upgrade to 16-inch alloys. 
Pay a little more and you can also embellish your pepper pack with the John Cooper Works Sport Pack. Now this will give humbler mini hatch models the look and feel of the top JCW hot hatch model with specific John Cooper Works design for the body kit, the rear spoiler, uh, the sport seats, the steering wheel and the upgraded 17 inch track spoke black alloy wheels. Plus there's uh, Dynamica and cloth upholstery and on lesser models performance control torque vectoring too. So that's one way you could go, but if you have a little more to spend, then your preferred route into specifying your mini hatch will probably lie with one of the two pricier chili packs, both of which include all those pepper pack features plus a range of others. And now with the straightforward standard chili pack, your car will also come with cloth and leather upholstery, sport seats, and the mini driving mode system, which enables you to select between mid, sport, or green settings, uh, depending on how efficient you want your journey to be. Uh, the Chili Pack deal also gives you a 17 inch wheel upgrade or 18 inches on the JCW variant and a fancier sport leather steering wheel if you have a Cooper or a Cooper D. Uh, if you want your mini hatch to have a John Cooper Works look and feel then the alternative John Cooper Works Chili Pack takes the Chili Spec features I just mentioned and adds to them all those extra JCW bits we covered off a moment ago in the Pepper Pack JCW upgrade. Uh, the body kit, the rear spoiler, the special 17 inch black track wheels, other special sports seats and steering wheel and so on. It'll all make your Mini very desirable indeed. Okay, let's say you've covered off the pepper chili thing and you've chosen your route into specking up this Mini, or perhaps you've decided instead to pick and choose individual pepper or chili pack features and specify them separately. And whatever your preference, with that first stage sorted, then you'll want to know what else is available to you when it comes to specifying your ideal version of this three-door hatch. Well, in answering that, let's start off with the priorities. Now that driving mode system I just mentioned, that's nice to have, but uh, we'd suggest it's incomplete without the addition of the variable damper control for a few hundred more uh, so that the various settings can tweak the ride quality as well as the steering and the throttle response. Super firm passive sport suspension is an option too, but get that and you'll really need to keep your chiropractor on speed dial. Um, elsewhere in the options list, well, you'll need to think about what you're going to do with that uh, center dash infotainment screen. Um, embellishing it with the navigation package, that will give you sat-nav and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. Or you could go further, as has happened in the case of our test car, and opt for the Navigation Plus pack. And that gives you a larger 8.8 inch display, a center armrest with a wireless phone charger, uh, real-time traffic information, various performance oriented vehicle apps, including sports instruments, um, a concierge service to answer journey inquiries, and a full suite of mini connected services. Now, Mini Connected is something we need to tell you more about because it's very clever. It's built around an integrated 4G SIM card and a now even cleverer Mini Connected app that you can download onto your smartphone. Uh, once you've synced the system with your handset, uh, your car's connected setup will be able to access all your destinations from your calendar, uh, save their addresses into the navigation system, uh, advise you when it's time to leave for a journey, and also share your arrival time with people you nominate. And there's all the usual remote services functionality too so you'll be able to remotely view uh, fuel levels lock or unlock the doors and find the car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it um, mini connected is the way the brand wants you to access online based services too such as web radio and the use of social networks like facebook twitter foursquare and glimpse and it's also the way that you'll be receiving RSS news feeds and entertainment features like uh, Deezer, Napster and TuneIn. Our favourite Mini Connected feature though is Find Mate. Now this option consists of tags with a Bluetooth tracking function that can be attached to frequently used objects and travel items like bags, cases and key rings. Now should you ever lose a tagged item, its position can not only be displayed on the car's dashboard screen but also on your handset via that mini connected smartphone app. What else? Uh, well, don't listen to the optional Harman Kardon stereo if you're someone who's easily parted from their money. And if you want to go even further, you can splash out on things like a panoramic glass roof, roof rails, windscreen heating, and a park distance control system, which will even better guide you into tight spaces if you also go for the rear parking camera. Uh, maybe you'll also want the head-up display, which is found on a little panel that rises at the base of the windscreen. Uh, we'd want the track-style vehicle tracker too, 
in case of theft. Um, other options include comfort access keyless entry, a heated windscreen, power folding mirrors, front seat heating and an auto dimming rear view mirror. Well, we should also mention driving orientated extras, uh, a rear view camera, active cruise control, which automatically keeps you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. And a key new optional feature introduced as part of this midterm model upgrade, uh, the Matrix Adaptive Headlamps, which are able to automatically adjust their brightness using a matrix of different light elements to cater for specific road conditions. Uh, for example, the lamps can add extra illumination to the side of the road in rural or urban areas, while the high beam lights can function with greater intensity at highway speeds without dazzling other road users. On to aesthetics, now you're certainly going to want to get the look of your Mini just right, both inside and out. Uh, the John Cooper Works packs we mentioned earlier are one route into doing this, but there are also lots of others, allowing you to pick, choose and individualise to your heart's content. Uh, let's start with the paintwork. Unless you want the car finished in pepper white, you're going to have to pay Mini for an extra cost colour, probably one of the various metallic shades. We've got emerald grey here. Uh, go for one of the John Cooper Works packs we mentioned earlier, and the brand will throw in a bright chilly red finish if you want it. Uh, you'll have to make choices for the roof too. All mainstream mini hatch models offer the option of a black, white or body coloured roof as a no cost option. Uh, John Cooper Works models can have a contrast red roof as a no cost option. Uh, you might also want to look at bonnet stripes in black or white, a chrome line exterior finish or darkened rear glass. Wheels are obviously a big thing to get right. Uh, the bigger 17 and 18 inch rims you can uh, option up to look great, but they'll adversely affect ride quality. So if you must have them, make sure you also specify variable damper control so you have a chance to soften the ride over poorer surfaces. In the absence of that feature, our advice would be to stick with one of the 16 inch rim options. Now, some of the rim designs available can be specified with run flat tires, and we'd certainly favor these given that there's no possibility of having a spare wheel Deal with this car, even one of the space saver variety. Inside, there are even more options. Mini's divided the front of the cockpit into four personalizable areas. Uh, first, you'll choose from four shades for what the brand calls color line elements, primarily the door armrests and the trim panels that arch around the passenger's knees. Uh, secondly, an interior surfaces option allows you to change the materials used for the decorative door trims and the fascia panel. Thirdly, selected structural elements uh, like the struts at the bottom of the center stack can be color coded. And fourthly, to round it all off, uh, you can choose the colour for the decorative rings around the uh, loudspeakers, the door handles, the air vents and the gear shift lever. There are various seat trimming options too. There's a choice of solid or perforated leather upholstery or if you're a bit more eco-minded, a combination of cloth and leatherette. There are two steering wheel upgrades available too. The John Cooper Works sports steering wheel mentioned earlier or a luxurious mini yours wheel fashioned from soft nappa leather with grey stitching and the Union Jack emblem. Now that last element is just one part of the Mini Yours customised range of options and features introduced with this facelifted Mini hatch. Others include two-tone wheels, stitched seat branding and a choice of three interior trimming themes, fibre alloy, dark cottonwood or off-white. It's all part of an approach that aims to take buyer individualisation to a whole fresh level with this car and that's something especially evident with the way that uh, through the programme you can customise the door sills, the puddle light and the uh, side scuttles by the side indicator with 3D printing and laser engraving. The dash panel above the glove box can be personalised in this way too, as it has been in this case, with a graphic that constantly illuminates the Union flag in a range of different colours as you drive. Uh, for all these elements, you can choose from a range of styles available through the Mini Yours customised online shop. Or if you want, you can have uh, your own bespoke pattern done or even feature your name. Although, uh, not really quite sure how all that would work when you come to sell the car. I mean, the next buyer is unlikely to want a Mini called Patricia with a puddle light showing a picture of your family crest. On to safety and a level of possible provision that seems an awfully long way from model founder Alec Isigonis' original thoughts on the subject back in the 60s. Uh, when he was asked about the crash worthiness of the Mini, he said, I make my cars with such good brakes and such good steering that if people get into a crash, it's their own fault. 
Now, thankfully, things have progressed a bit in the safety department since then, uh, although perhaps not quite far enough in this case. Uh, even back in 2014, when the Euro NCAP safety test was less stringent, this F-56 series Mark III Mini didn't manage the usual five-star showing, and it certainly wouldn't achieve that uh, if it was subjected to today's upgraded test because autonomous braking isn't standard fit. The brand unfortunately missed the opportunity to incorporate that into its facelifted model range, but what it laudably has standardised is its eCall Intelligent Emergency Calling System. Now, in the event of an accident, uh, this setup automatically detects vehicle location and accident severity before contacting a call centre to initiate fast and effective assistance. Now, that could be a lifesaver. As for other standard safety kit, well, camera-driven features are notable by their absence, so you're limited to more conventional stuff. Uh, there are anti-lock brakes, of course, and they have electronic brake force distribution to make them more effective and cornering brake control to help you through the turns. So you're always primed for a swift stop. There's tyre pressure monitoring, fading brake support and a useful brake drying function which will imperceptibly dab the discs in wet weather to keep them dry. Uh, there's also the usual stability control system and a DTC, dynamic traction control setup, that in poor conditions will allow a bit of controlled slip at the drive wheels so moving away on loose sand or deep snow can be a little bit smoother. If all of that isn't enough to avoid an accident, then Isofix child seat fastenings, uh, pedestrian-friendly bonnet, and twin front, side, and curtain airbags will all be welcome features. If you want to go further, you can tick the box for the optional driving assistance pack, which will give you three camera-driven features. Uh, a rear-end collision warning setup will alert you if you're just about to get hit from behind, so you have a chance to take avoiding action. Uh, traffic sign recognition will picture speed signs as you pass them and then display them on the dash. And main beam assistant dips your headlights in the face of uh, oncoming traffic. It's all a long way from the days of good Sir Alec. Efficiency analysis can be confusing, and it certainly is here. Now, Mini tells us that great lengths have been gone to in improving all the twin power turbo engines on offer in this third generation Mini hatch, but the figures that they deliver aren't actually quite as good as the ones that uh, we were given when we first tested this car back in 2014. Uh, there is a reason for that, of course, or at least Mini says there is. The new and more accurate WLTP, World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure, which is now used for compilation of official fuel and CO2 stats, has a reductive effect on efficiency readings in its efforts towards day-to-day -to -day realism. Mini, though, has been able to reduce much of the impact of that thanks to the engineering updates I just referenced. These include changes to the oil supply, the engine electronics, the intake air ducting, uh, the cooling setup and the exhaust system. Even the engine cover is now made from lighter CFRP, carbon fibre reinforced plastic, and that's fashioned from a recycled material generated during production of BMW's I range of electric vehicles. That hasn't helped the largest engine in the range much. Uh, the two litre four cylinder unit used in the top Cooper S and John Cooper Works models. This is actually 35 kilos heavier than it was before. That's thanks to a more comprehensive program of refettling. Now, despite this, Mini does insist that changes to the high pressure injectors, uh, a redesigned exhaust system, and a fresh turbocharger have together improved fuel economy by around 7%. Statistically, that leaves the Cooper S recording up to 54.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 133 grams per kilometre of CO2. And the John Cooper Works model managing 42.8 mpg and 150 grams per kilometre. In both cases, you'll improve those readings by about 10% if you choose the optional automatic gearbox, which for the Cooper S is now an improved 7-speed unit. Here though, we've been trying the 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol power plant that most mini hatch customers choose. Now, as you might have heard us say elsewhere in this film, this is now fitted to the base Mini 1 model as well as to the Cooper variant that we're trying today. Um, and either way, the official readings are, well, pretty much the same, uh, up to 57.6 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 111 grams per kilometre of CO2 for the Mini 1 and up to 60.1 mpg and 105 grams per kilometre for the Cooper. Now to give you some class perspective that is fractionally better than you'll get from a rival DS3 in equivalent
equivalent PureTech 130 form and it's way better than you get from a comparably performing car that uh, a likely buyer might see as a competitor so a model like Fiat's above 500 and Vauxhall's Adam S. All the figures I've just given refer to the best possible readings achievable with this three-door hatch body style. Uh, if you choose this car with five doors instead, that body shape's extra 60 kilos of weight will inevitably have a fractionally negative impact. Uh, if you are really serious about maximizing your running cost returns though, you'll find that very little gets close to a mini diesel. Um, now, thanks to the recent media vilification of black pump fuel motoring, uh, there is only one very on offer now, the 116 HP Mini Cooper D. This uses a three-cylinder 1.5-litre diesel and it manages up to 74.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you want to do better than that in a mini hatch, your only option will be to talk to your dealer about the full electric battery-powered model the brand's developed, uh, the Mini E. Now this borrows its drivetrain from the BMW i3 and it should be able to take you around 180 miles on a single charge. But let's concentrate on the more conventional fossil fueled models that are our focus here. Uh, as you'd expect if you know anything about the Mini brand, uh, there are a whole host of what the company calls minimalism technologies which uh, help this car to achieve its class leading efficiency. These include the basics that these days you might expect, uh, slippery aerodynamics, brake energy regeneration, uh, the reduction of engine and transmission internal frictional losses, and ancillary engine systems that operate only when they're called upon rather than uh, constantly pumping away in the background. Plus, of course, there's a stop-start system to cut the engine when you don't need it, uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Automatic models can also work with the mini navigation system to take account of your selected route and to better control your gear shifts to suit. To further build on that approach, uh, the driver can better play his or her part with a couple of optional systems that should further help to drive your running costs down. Uh, first up is the mini driving mode system that we're trying here. This operates via use of this toggle switch at the base of the center stack and it allows you to switch from a default mid mode to self-explanatory sport or green settings. Green mode modifies the throttle and transmission response and it tweaks the standard gear shift point display. It also includes a so-called coasting function, where at high cruising speeds, uh, the drivetrain is temporarily decoupled for extra frugality when you come off the accelerator. The onboard computer includes two readouts which demonstrate the effect of all the fuel savings this creates, uh, one that shows the extra mileage available and another one that shows the reduced energy consumption. There's a road-based minimalism screen that shows driving efficiency in real time with different wheel colors. And finally, there's also the minimalism analyzer that you can add as part of the Mini Connected package. Now this is there to score your driving and guide you towards more economic progress. And it grades you with a star rating out of five in three areas, changing gear, anticipation, and acceleration. Now this setup might initially seem to be a bit of a gimmick, but owners who've used it reckon on fuel economy improvements of between 4 and 8 miles per gallon. What else? Well, residual values are bound to be strong, they always have been. Uh, you can expect your mini hatch to have retained just over half its value at the 3 year 60,000 mile point. Now that's assuming you've specified your car properly with the optional pepper or chili packs that used buyers will be looking for. If though you've gone overboard with options, uh, particularly on the aesthetic and personalizable ones, don't expect to get very much of that money back at resale time. As expected, there's a normal three-year unlimited mileage warranty with the usual BMW-style variable service indicators. Uh, beyond that, there's an optional extended mini-insured warranty available that can cover you for up to 100,000 miles, and it can be also specified to apply to particular components, so uh, like the clutch, uh, the engine, or the gearbox. And on that subject, almost all mini buyers opt for the no-brainer TLC package, which for around £350 gives you comprehensive servicing cover for five years or 50,000 miles, whichever comes around first. 
This also includes a Mini MOT Protect Assurance Guarantee, which states that in the unlikely event your car should fail its first, second or third MOT tests, Mini will cover the cost of repair or replacement on an array of selected parts. Uh, once you've hit three years of ownership, you can also buy a further Mini TLC XL package, which for £275 gives you the same kind of cover for a further three years or 30,000 miles. And finally, we should mention insurance groups, which are the same regardless of whether you choose your car in three or five door form. Uh, you're talking Group 13E for the Mini 1, Group uh, 17E for the Cooper D, Group 19E for this Cooper, Group uh, 28E for the Cooper S, and Group 30E for the John Cooper Works variant. Uh, Mini itself offers fully comprehensive insurance, but you might find that your own broker can improve on the premiums that the dealer can offer. The third generation redesign of this mini hatch saw the car grow up a little and face its responsibilities, as all of us have to. Yet at the same time, the brand was keen that this car shouldn't lose its fun and joie de vivre, the very attributes that make most customers want to consider one in the first place. Now, the midterm updates that we've been reviewing here are mostly aimed at making sure that that doesn't happen. This hatch version being now smarter, better connected and more personalizable than before. It's the latest chapter in a modern era success story with nearly three million first, second and third generation versions of what we could call the Jur Mini having rolled out of the British Oxford factory gate since the car was first relaunched by BMW in 2001. Now mentioning that brand is more relevant than it's ever been in connection with this car because this improved mini hatch really does now feel like a cut sized BMW with all the quality and technology that you'd find in a model from that parent company. In short, in many ways, it's come of age. Of course, not everyone is mini-minded. Some don't like the way the looks have evolved. Others still don't think it's big enough. And this car can certainly be expensive once you've added in a few essential options. But those are things that uh, creators of this third generation version never set out to change. Uh, the improvements that they have made though are resoundingly successful. Although the endearing raw edges that characterised older versions of this car may now be distant memories, added maturity certainly brings many compensations. Which leaves us with a British-built benchmark in the premium small car segment, and a model that, although easy to imitate, is now even more difficult to beat. Now, some rivals might be arguably more stylish or slightly larger, but still, none can beat its fun factor and its everyday running cost affordability. Uh, both still crucial considerations in buying a car of this kind. Back in 1956, when he created the British original, Sir Alec Isagonis knew that. We think he'd have been pleased at how his creations turned out.